Okay, we're back in Excel here and going to be doing the data analysis portion for the Inclined Plane Lab. So we have over here the uh, pasted version of the data points that we pulled from the lab. Um, it's important to remember that these numbers here are putting the data in particular units. So the numbers that we have here uh, are time is going to be measured in frames and our distance, our positions rather, are going to be measured in pixels. So the first thing we need to do is do this conversion. We uh, noted in the previous video that the 87.5 centimeter width of the video corresponded to 1200 pixels. So if I want to figure out the width of one pixel, I'm going to take that 87.5 and divide it by 1200, and that is going to give us our distance in centimeters for what the a single pixel is. Uh, we do a similar thing when we're doing uh, the conversion from frames to time. So if we have 29.97 frames per second, then our uh, one frame is gonna to correspond to one divided by 29.97, or that many seconds. And so, uh, so we here we just have these conversion factors up top, just so we have, just so we are familiar with them. Um, but what I'm going to do is create a new set of columns so that I can keep separate uh, my original data and then my converted data. Um, and I'm going to fix that spacing here just because it bothers me. Okay, um, our conversion is fairly straightforward. We're just going to take that time value and multiply by our conversion factor. Uh, so I'm just gonna refer to the cell up there, $F$2. That gives me my time in seconds. And I can just drag the corner, copy that down to all the cells. So that gives me my elapsed time in seconds. Um, and then similarly for our positions, I take my X position. So what happened there? It's equal to that multiplied by uh, this number up here, so that would be dollar $h$2, dollar so that gives me my uh, value of x, bring that down here, same thing for value of y, 106, multiplied by my conversion factor, dollar $h$2, dollar and copy that down there. So we have our data set now. And one of the next things uh, that we're going to do for all of these labs is create a graph. Um, and our standard, unless we're told otherwise, is always going to make a scatter plot. Um, so, you know, we're here in charts, uh, and we're going to choose the scatter plot that doesn't have the points attached, uh, that doesn't connect the dots. Um, we always want the only line to be the trend line that we're going to eventually put. Um, we want to make sure that we get uh, proper labels on all of our graphs, just so coming back later, we know exactly uh, exactly what we were trying to create here. So, um, and all I need to know, know is the variable and the unit, so we don't necessarily have to write everything out. Um, this is X in centimeters, and then this is our position graph in the X direction, or rather it's a graph of X of T. Okay, so if we just wanted the position graph, uh, I'm going to get rid of these lines just because I want to. Uh, this is what it is. And you notice that already it's not quite linear, nor should it be. We are looking at accelerated motion, um, and so we should see some curvature to this position graph. Now, without even computing what our velocity is, uh, we can start to extract out some of our um, parameters just by fitting a trend line to this graph. Notice if that by default it tries to connect it, uh, it tries to make it a linear trend line. Um, since we expect this to be accelerated motion, this is going to be an order two polynomial. Uh, and so I'm going to select that. As always, whenever we have a trend line, I want to display the equation on the chart uh, and then get our r squared. So we have r squared that's fairly close to one. Uh, and then we have our equation here. So remember when it, it creates the trend line, it says y and x, where it assumes y is the vertical axis x is the horizontal, this is really x is equal to this number times t squared plus this number times t and so on. And uh, since 
for an object undergoing a constant acceleration, if we look at our position equation, uh, this coefficient here represents one half of our acceleration, meaning that if I take twice that number I had there, 47.575, uh, that gives us our acceleration uh, in the x direction. So this would be ax measured in centimeters per second squared. Um, uh, without even uh, computing any velocities. Uh, so in fact, we just need the position information and that's going to be enough to uh, tell us something about the X acceleration. Uh, do the same thing for the Y direction. So um, control click so I can select cells that are not next to each other. I'm gonna insert the same sort of graph. Um, again, all of these should be properly formatted. I'm not gonna do that here just for the sake of saving a little bit of time. So things are getting cluttered over here. So notice um, for the Y direction, our data looks a little more shaky. That's because the cart doesn't actually move that much in the vertical direction. Um, and so that's gonna have a little bit more error than what we had for the horizontal direction. And so displaying that equation uh, on the chart, again, the uh, coefficient of this x squared term is going to give us our acceleration in the y direction, um, which is a lot smaller than it was in the x because of the slope of that graph. So our ay is going to be equal to 2 multiplied by 3.1434. So uh, that gives us our ay, again, measured in centimeters per second squared. And so I'm just writing these units there uh, to remind myself that uh, this is the, um, these are the actual units, and then these are the x and y components. Uh, I can use then use Pythagorean theorem to get out what the, uh, what the overall acceleration is. <clears throat> um, for some of the labs, uh, including this one, I think, uh, we're be, we also are asked to find a velocity graph or to create a velocity graph. Um, and here we have motion in both the x and y direction, and so we could. Um, create both um, a VX and a VY. Now, um, how we create this uh, goes back to uh, a, the web page that we had, I had posted a while ago that was created by the company about uh, the methods for computing the velocity. What you don't want to do is just take the difference from one point to the previous one and divide by that time, because uh, what that does is that underestimates what our velocity is, because it only refers to a previous amount of time. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a so-called uh, so symmetric method. So the first one was an asymmetric method because it only involves a point behind. This is going to be a symmetric method involving a point ahead and a point behind, effectively finding the average velocity between the point, uh, the data point ahead and the data point before. So, uh, so I have to start at the second data point, uh, and our velocity is just the difference in position. So final minus initial divided by final minus initial, and then end parentheses. So this gives us our velocity in centimeters per second. Um, and then I can just drag that down here. Notice that because of how this uh, is defined, we are going to be missing the first data point and the last data point because of how we did that. Uh, and we could do a similar thing to find the VY. Uh, another thing that I discovered while putting this together uh, is that um, you can accomplish the same thing using a function called the slope um, that says essentially just performs a linear fit without the need for graphing it. So we plug in a bunch of y values, we plug in a bunch of t values, and since velocity is the slope of the position graph, uh, we end up getting the same thing. And so, uh, so that can be a quick way just to put that together. So if I want to create my velocity graph, again, I only select the data for which I have points, which means I'm not selecting my first and last uh, time point. Again, add the same kind of chart. Uh, we have a scatter chart. Again, our velocity graph here is going to be a little bit more shaky compared to our position graph, just as a nature of uh, looking at these differences. Um, but since this is a velocity graph, if we um, then fit this, and again, all of your graphs should be properly formatted. I'm just uh, skipping ahead to save time, but format all your graphs. Um, display equation on chart and then R squared. Um, notice the fit isn't as good, but we still get 
um, around the same value. Now the slope uh, is just equal to our acceleration. So if we look at what we had before from the position graph, we've got 95.15. Uh, if we go from the velocity graph, we're going to get 95.002. Uh, as we'll get into later, all of those essentially will be within the error, uh, within the uncertainty that we're going to create. Now, uh, we also have to compare these values, um, again, the AX and the AY with a prediction. Uh, and for that, we're going to need to know the slope of the incline. Uh, and I said in the previous video that uh, we could do that by separately measuring two different points on the curve. However, uh, we also have uh, this data here that tells us um, how the cart was moving. Um, and in fact, if I were to make a graph of that, just instead of plotting a position graph of versus time, I'm instead going to plot x, or sorry, I'm going to plot y versus x. So uh, that actually shows me the points I had here. Again, x is horizontal, y is vertical. That's the that leading edge of the cart as it goes up here. And since it has to travel parallel to the incline, if I were to add a trend line, and again, add a linear trend line, because that slope is, should be linear, um, and fit a straight line to that, uh, we get that our slope of that graph uh, is going to be the slope of the incline. So again, slope is rise over run. Uh, so this is 0 0.0839. So 0 0.0839 is going to be the slope of that curve. However, um, we're interested in finding the angle because that's what lets us uh, do trig and do our calculations. Um, and if we were to draw out a triangle, um, the slope of that graph is just equal to the tangent of whatever angle we have. In other words, if I know the rise over run, then um, that's the same thing as the opposite over the adjacent, the tangent function for this angle measured from the horizontal. Uh, so to get out what that angle is, I just have to take the inverse tangent of whatever the slope is. In Excel, that's a tan or arc tangent. So plug that in. Uh, Excel by default does everything in radians. And so we would to convert this back into degrees, I would multiply by 180 and then divide by pi. Again, Excel has a built-in exact version of pi. So this would give us uh, the angle of that incline, and that is measured in that is measured in degrees. So um, notice that we didn't even have to convert the distance to do that. We would get the same thing if we just started from our original pixel data, because each of the x and y's got multiplied by the same number. Uh, in fact, we didn't even have to plot it at all. Again, using that slope function that we mentioned earlier, we just take all of our y values. And here, I can just select every single data point and then put in our x values. So all of our y's, all of our x's, that gives us the slope. Hey, there it is. Uh, and in fact, just to, we can even combine that uh, into one single command. Again, take the inverse tangent. That goes inside the parentheses times 180 divided by pi. And that would give us our angle. So uh, so anything involving an incline, again, uh, we just have to need to know the slope. That gives us the angle. Um, coming back up here, notice that we, we use this method to compute the velocity. We could continue onward uh, and compute our acceleration using a similar method, um, meaning I'm going to look at the difference in velocity over time. Uh, the reason why we don't do that is because of the, the nature of our data. That's going to be a very, very noisy graph. It's going to have a lot of um, sort of a lot of uncertainty to it. Uh, notice we have a much sort of smoother graph for our uh, position graph in the x direction than we did for our velocity. Um, it doesn't really doesn't really get us anything by computing an acceleration every time. So all of our accelerations, things like that, we're always going to extract from uh, these slopes along these lines. So I think uh, this video has gone on long enough and uh, hopefully uh, have some tips for working with Excel. Bye.